as chair of the ICC++ Standards Committee. What role do you think AI will play in shaping programming languages? Uh, AI is going to be a big deal. It already is a big deal. Uh, I kind of like the name Copilot just because it has the connotation of a helper. Um, I know Andre Alexandrescu is super hyped about it. Uh, I, I, when there are conversations, I tend to take the view that I, I love that it's able to do rote things so I don't have to. And it's amazing just the amount of rote things that, that it can already do, and, and that's going to keep getting better. Where I'm curious to see if there will be a limit is where creativity is needed. Uh, because uh, so far, uh, it, the glorified autocomplete, but a super, super powerful autocomplete, is, is very good at doing things that have already been done, uh, doing things that there, there are variations of things that have already been done. But to the extent that we want to solve new problems, to write new kinds of software or just new algorithms or solve a specific business problem that is different from ones that have been done before, uh, I'm curious to see what kind of ceiling we're going to hit in, with at least this generation of AI as to what it's able to do, just because it's it's about syntax, not really about semantics. I mean, it is so good at syntax that it seems semantic, but it really is a syntactic construct. Uh, so I, creativity and semantics, that's where I'm going to uh, kind of be curious as to see, uh, will it be able to to jump that huge chasm and and go beyond? But even what it can do now is is pretty powerful and pretty useful just in answering questions so I don't have to do it by hand or writing some rote code by hand. It, it's very good. Of course, I, I always check the code first. Do you have any rituals or routines before going on stage to give a talk? Rituals before going on stage? Uh, take a few deep breaths, uh, think hard about the first couple of sentences of the talk, uh, those kinds of things. Um, just in terms of general preparation, the number one thing that I found useful and I recommend to all speakers uh, is because you're always going to have butterflies and you're always going to want to do the best job you can, is after you spend all that time uh, preparing your talk. You know, you've, you've been putting together beautiful slides. You've been having a nice flow of main points that build on each other. You've done all that work, which is going to take days, maybe weeks. Don't shortchange yourself by not rehearsing. At least once, for me, it usually works best if it's the night before, the day before. At least once, go through it end to end, out loud. And the one thing you will find, I guarantee you, is that you're your actual presentation the next day will be smoother, even though you think you're saying exactly the same words and it will be about 20% shorter, just because you'll be smoother and have fewer regressions and things like that. Even if you don't notice them, you'll just notice that it, it's tighter and cleaner. But also, you'll know how long your talk is. When a speaker goes over time, when they get to the end of their time and they still have 10 slides left and they're rushing to get them in, that is a tell that they did not rehearse. No professional performer, musician, um, speaker, which is a form of performance, should skip rehearsing. Rehearsal is important. Uh, really, if we don't rehearse, we're shortchanging all that time we put into our talk and get, with that just one extra hour that we could do to polish it and make it that much better, uh, we're shortchanging that talk and we're really shortchanging the audience. So rehearsal is not just if you're in music. Giving a talk is also a performance. What do you find most exciting about C++? What do I find most exciting? I'll tell you what I find most exciting right now, and it's what I mentioned in my talk just a few minutes ago, is the reflection and safety improvements, substantial reflection and substantial safety improvements are starting to be approved for the standard and hopefully will make C++26 because we're only a few months away from the design freeze for that. And those have been baking for a decade or more. So I'm really excited to see them finally getting to the point where they're going to be in the standard and start to be delivered that way, because I think they'll also foundationally change how we write C++ code and how we think about it over the next decade, because we'll be able to use reflection to write generative programs that we could never write before that will for, they have the benefits I mentioned in my talk just now. But with safety, to have a language that's super efficient and safe by default and used by 10 million programmers already, 
that would be a cool thing. So I'm very bullish um, on many other features that are coming in. I, I like many of the other features coming in, including others I've proposed. Uh, I don't think any will be as impactful, though, over the next decade as reflection and safety. And I'm really excited to see those now finally starting to land in the C++ 26 timeframe. What advice would you give to the code dive community? Um, so if you're interested in C++ specifically, be very aware of reflection and safety improvements and, and watch as those start to unfold. They will impact your daily work in a good way. Uh, so that, that's one thing specifically narrowly for C++. More generally, as we are starting to see some fundamental changes like C++ removing undefined behavior perhaps um, by default, or AI uh, changing the way that we do research, but also uh, generate especially rote code where there's less creativity and then it starts getting better and better, stay curious. There is so much to learn, and that doesn't mean uh, getting bogged down in the tidal wave of there's all these frameworks to learn, and the, uh, there's way more than any of us can absorb. So don't feel bad if you can't absorb everything. None of us can. We're all being swamped by the tidal wave. But those, two, so that's why I focus on those two main improvements in C++, but also see the improvements in AI, and uh, as as we're uh, the reason I say to stay curious is where as we're absorbing those things. It also makes me think back to my university days. So way back in the 1980s when I was an undergrad, the most important uh, course I ever took was not about some specific part of programming. Uh, the two I would pick, the first is algorithms and data structures. Know your fundamentals. It is amazing, especially those who don't have CS degrees, maybe who never took an algorithms or data structures course. Just take one. Like, just be aware of the basics of it. There's, there's, and that will take you such a long way. But in the CS degree, the, the one optional course that I would recommend to everybody, and like, you can now still go and find something like this online or do it yourself by experimenting, is a comparative programming languages course. I will always remember that semester because in that course, we learned a different programming language roughly every week, I think it was, and maybe it was every two weeks, I've forgotten exactly, but then you had an assignment to write a simple program in, but that actually did something in that language, and then you learn another one. And this was not, of course, this was before Java, but it wasn't like, oh, week one is C, week two is C++, week three is Java, week four is C sharp. No, once you do this course, all those languages look like they're basically twins. No, this was week one was assembler, week two was prologue, week three was something like OCaml. And everything assembler is everything is an instruction, very low level, and you learn a whole way, another way of thinking about programming. Uh, prologue, everything is a rule totally changes how you think about programming. A functional programming language like Erlang or OCaml is not the same as Prolog, although there are similarities. Every, everything is an expression, totally different way of, of thinking. And once you do a few of those, you start realizing, oh, there's much more to the world than just curly brace imperative programming languages. And C and C sharp start looking like siblings at that point. So it's very mind uh, expanding. Even if you end up not using those daily in your day-to-day -day work, stay curious, know about them. And so if you didn't have a course like that, you can build one yourself just by uh, having a, a pr project where for a couple of weeks or one month, I'm gonna use some of my nighttime to learn about a language I'd never heard of before that's very different from the ones I'm used to, you'll be glad you did. It's, uh, it's mind-opening and stay curious. There's a lot to learn and, and a lot of fun to be had.